Welcome to the Moon Project. Your first question might be, what do I have to do? Well, what you have to do is make 12 measurements of the moon over the course of the semester. 10 measurements if it's the summer semester. And the tools you're going to use for your measurements are your own hands. So with the hands, we can make angular measurements. And the idea is that if you use a relaxed hand like this and you hold it at arm's length, it will subtend an angle of 15 degrees. And so you can make a measurement of 15 degrees with an angle either vertically or horizontally. And just to prove that, I'm going to hold my hand out here straight out so that there's a plane here from, from the bottom of my arm here. That's 15 degrees there. Another 15 degrees, so that's 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, right above my head. And so six measurements of 15 would be 90 degrees, and that pretty much works, works itself out. Now you say, well, I've got big hands. If you have big hands, you probably have longer arms, and that will still... Um, allow you to make a measurement of 15 degrees. If you have smaller hands, you have shorter arms, and it will still subtend an angle of 15 degrees. So it's a nice basic measurement, and it seems to work. Uh, if you use a fist, that's about 10 degrees. So 10 degrees, 20, 30, like that. And so just do it at arm's length. We're going to do that vertically for the altitude measurement and horizontally for the right ascension measurement. Just use one hand and go to the next hand from your reference point. More on what the reference point is in the coming slides. But we're going to show you how to make the determination of the phase, uh, make the measurements, and to fill out your worksheet in this video. Okay, we've gone out to observe the moon, and there it is up in the sky. It looks beautiful. Now we have it slightly exaggerated in this view because the actual moon diameter is only about half a degree across and we have it a little bit larger here just for clarity's sake. First thing we're going to notice about the moon is its phase. And this moon is completed on the right hand side and incomplete on the left hand side. If that were the case, where it's completed on the right hand side and incomplete on the left, this moon would be a waxing moon. Any moon that is completed on the right-hand side uh, would be a waxing moon, whether it be a gibbous, as this moon looks like, or a crescent, which would be completed on the right-hand side, which crescent being less than half illuminated as we're looking at it, and a gibbous being more than half illuminated as we are looking at it. So in this particular case, our moon is a waxing gibbous, and that would be the phase that we would write down on the worksheet for the moon project. We also need to write down its illumination, and if it's more than half illuminated as we're looking at, then we would have to come up with some kind of estimate for that illumination. I'm going to estimate about 60%. Um, it could be 65%. I'm not really sure. But that's pretty close to about how much of the full moon that I can see uh, with this illumination. So we'll put that on the worksheet as well. If this moon were completed on the left-hand side, this looks like another gibbous moon, but this in particular case is complete to the left, and that would make it a waning moon. So a moon that is not full completed on the left hand side is waning and that's true if it were a gibbous moon like this one or a crescent moon like this one so the top is a waning gibbous and the bottom is a waning crescent okay so we've gone out we've observed the phase of the moon we've written that down on our sheet now we wish to make a measurement of its position based on altitude and right ascension First thing we have to do is orient ourselves to a known direction. So we need to know what direction is south. 
so that we can orient our body so that the north-south direction goes above our head and we are facing south. So you can use landmarks to do that. A lot of roads are north-south. Cutting Line Road in Madison is north-south. Um, I-65 is north-south. Memorial Parkway is north-south. Um, Highway 31 that goes by the, the Decatur campus is north-south. So you orient yourself in that direction or you could use a compass or an iPhone which has a uh, compass app and that would tell you which direction is indeed south. You face south and if that were true as you're facing south that establishes a direction and you align yourself on that line. That would make east to your left hand side as you're facing south and west to your right hand side as you're facing south. So anything to the right of this line will be west and anything to the left of this line would be east. So this particular moon is to the west and now we wish to make that measurement across to see how many degrees it is indeed west. So we're going to use our hand spans and the relaxed hand slightly uh, apart is 15 degrees of measurement at your full arm's length and that's true for any person because um, if you have large hands you probably have longer arms and that makes it the same kind of angle degree as if you were having sh smaller hands with shorter arms this works out just about the same so in this case I'm going to make a hand span measurement with one hand from this line directly south and go across and this is my right hand and then I'll put my left hand next to it for another 15 degrees and then take my right hand and put that next to that again until I reach the moon. In this particular case I have three hand spans so that is three um, segments of 15 degrees giving me 45 degrees and I'm going to the west so this is a 45 degree west measurement for my right ascension. All right, so we got our right ascension measurement. Now we wish to measure the altitude and I'd like to measure the height of this line to the height of the moon based on angle. And it might be somewhat difficult to do it this way. I could actually even look directly at the moon for this measurement because I can bring this line over here to where the moon is and just establish a plane from my arm uh, straight out in front of me to the lower end and then measure this angle up to the moon. So I, again I'm going to use hand spans and if I put my left hand here that's about 15 degrees up and then put my right hand next to it another 15 degrees measuring up left hand 15 degrees try another right hand and not quite a full 15 degrees. As I go from my thumb to my index finger, that's about five degrees. Index finger to the ring finger is about five degrees. Ring finger to the pinky is about five degrees. So here I'm cutting off about five degrees, giving this about another 10 degrees based on the hand span. So I have 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 10. We have an altitude of 55 degrees. So I'm going to put those measurements on my worksheet. So here I am with my worksheet. And the first thing I'm going to do is uh, write my name as best I can with the cursor. And then I'm going to write my observing location. and the date, so we'll say June 1st. Local time, we'll say it was uh, 10 p.m., which would be about right. Moon phase, it was a waxing gibbous.
right here as best as I can with a uh, cursor. Illumination, as I saw it, uh, uh, as far as the full moon concerned, full moon would be 100%. A quarter moon would be 50%. And it was a little bit more than a quarter moon, and we saw that it was probably about 60% illumination. Altitude, we measured with our hand spans to be 55 degrees from the horizon, which was the plane of my arm straight out. Degrees of right ascension, we measured that from the directly south location to be 45 degrees. Three hand spans, which would coordinate to three hours. And that was west, because it was to my right as I was looking south. Time on the overhead meridian, we're gonna to have to calculate this. But since um, the position was 45 degrees west, that means the moon has already passed my overhead meridian, the meridian of me looking south. And every 15 degrees is one hour. Every minute or every degree is four minutes. So three hours ago, at least based on the time, it would have been on my overhead meridian. It's already past that point, so we have to go back in time if our um, measurement is to the west. If our measurement were to the east, we'd have to add time in order to put the moon on our overhead meridian. But in this case, for every 15 degrees is an hour. So if we divide this by 15, I really shouldn't write on my worksheet like this, but it would look something like this. There'd be three hours that we need to subtract from our local time. And so that would give me 7 p.m. So far so good, but I need to correct for daylight savings time. If my measurement were between the beginning of March and the beginning of November, then I'm on daylight savings time and I need to subtract another hour for that. If I'm, if I'm between November and March, then there is no correction for this. So that puts me at 6 p.m. And then my location is um, North Alabama, and we have a, a strict correction for location to put us within the time zone of adding 16 minutes. So depending on where you are in your time zone, that may be different. But for us in North Alabama, that's going to be 16 minutes. So my final time is going to be 6.16 p.m. And that's what I'm going to put in for my time on the overhead meridian, 6.16 p.m. This is somewhat reasonable since we would expect a waxing gibbous moon to occur between 6 p.m. and 12 midnight. The first quarter moon will be at 6 p.m. around there. The full moon will be around 12 midnight, and anything in between would be a waxing gibbous, 6 to 12 midnight. So that is my first data point. And uh, if you have questions about data points, just uh, uh, ask a question on the discussion group, and we'll answer it there, and all the uh, class will benefit from the ensuing discussion. So. You are not alone with these measurements if you choose to do that. These must be your measurements. Uh, I don't want you taking data off the internet and looking up and seeing what the right ascension was for the moon on a particular night based on data and coming up with minus 90 degrees from the vernal equinox or anything like that. I want you to use these techniques that I've shown you and come up with measurements that are consistent with what we've just seen, either east or west, some degree measurement to the, to the west or some degree measurement to the east, and use these measurements to prove that you went out and observed the moon, because that's one of the main reasons for this project, is to have you go out and look at the sky and observe the moon and what else is out there on that particular night. Um, that's what I want you to do. So... Only your measurements will count, 
And um, if you have a question about a particular measurement, start a discussion thread and we will discuss it in detail as to how you would make the calculation for the time on the overhead meridian and that sort of thing. So you're not alone as far as that is concerned. Just start a discussion thread and everyone can benefit from our ensuing discussion about your measurement. But it must be your measurement um, and um, it must be one measurement per day. So you, so don't go out there at 6 p.m. make a measurement and then go out at 7 p.m. and make another measurement of the same moon for that night. Now you probably could make a measurement in the evening and then the next morning make a measurement and that would be fine. But it must be 12 separate days of measurements for the moon. And you know sometimes the moon is covered up by you know clouds. So you want to take the measurements over the course of semester when you see the moon wherever you happen to be if you're out shopping see the moon just kind of orient yourself south if where you think south is and and make your measurement um, people near you will probably think you're uh, kind of weird but um, they'll get over it and um, so uh, it should be fun I hope you enjoy this this moon project